Here's a tour of the Looking Glass Hostel. So this used to be a restaurant. So you can sleep on the floor for 15. And here's the nicest kitchen any through hiker could ever possibly have. Obviously, like I said, refurbished restaurant. Walk in freezer, complete with a real buffalo head. No idea what that's in there for. Walk in refrigerator, and uh, Luna, the host, does provide sodas and um, pizzas and other things that you can get for a great price. There's even a pizza oven. So. Yeah, awesome, awesome spot. She's a wonderful host. There's cabins in the back that we can see through this window. Little shed-like things, and there's a shower out there. And two doors down, there's a laundromat. So definitely a good one-stop shop. This is my friend Warrior rocking some of the hostel clothes. I ended up making pretty good friends with this group of people. So Warrior on the left, Lost and Found in the middle, and that's Trash Panda on the right. This is the super expensive touristy hotel that's in town, and this is inside the main lodge there. Well, this is a really easy turn to miss. You're kind of walking down this dirt road, looking at the mountains, and you kind of come along, and, and oh, <laughs> it's like barely, barely would you see that. So leaving East Glacier, had a really nice stay. The Looking Glass Hostel is, is perfect in that retired restaurant. Um, yeah, it's all in kilometers, but I can tell you that Two Medicine Campground is roughly from here, like 10 and a half miles or a little less. So not gonna be too hard of a day. Here we go, entering Glacier National Park for the last time. Um, and I will be in it until the very end. Pretty exciting stuff. Okay, I just picked up my backcountry wilderness permits and all of my reservation and planning paid off. I'm in Two Medicine Campground right now. Uh, the woman that helped me was very, very nice and kind. Uh, the process, even though I had reservations, took a long time. Like they, The way that their system makes them do it uh, just doesn't seem efficient. So, I mean, it took me probably 35 minutes even though I was already all planned out. So, I feel bad for those uh, rangers because they have to deal with that for like every single person that walks in so yeah uh, but yeah all worked out good so I'm going to my backcountry campsite tonight gonna get set up and yeah get up early tomorrow she said that I have a lot of elevation and two passes tomorrow so I'll get up early and get that started This little dude is less than three feet from me. <laughs> I kid you not, my foot's right here. He was just right there, little weasel. I saw a couple tiny little white specks on that cliff, and a lot of times that just turns out to be white rocks. But you never know, so I zoomed in with my amazing cell phone camera. And they very much, to me from here, look like goats. Good start to the morning.
This was the first of two bear closures along my route, so I had to take an alternate to get up. Wow, so good on the wildlife this morning. I spoke with some folks in the Looking Glass Hostel that had already finished the CDT, and they said they really didn't see any wildlife in the park. And so far this morning alone, I've seen this very bold deer, uh, the friendliest weasel of all time, or at least maybe a really dumb one, that came running up within three feet of me on the trail, then noticed me and then ran off to the side. And then up high earlier, I saw at least three mountain goats. So yeah, off to a great start. I'm seeing all the critters that I don't mind seeing. Um, no dangerous ones so far. So I'm at Pitamankin Pass, and this is looking down to the south, which is beautiful. You can get a peek out there to the east of uh, the Montana Plains. Big mountains. So this is the way that I go. I came down from that pass, down along here to this intersection, and now I go that way, and then drop down in between these lakes, and then go to the far side of that current lake and cross it, and it kind of stays through this valley for a while. I'm now officially back on the CDT after that bear closure, and so this is at the top of the pass looking down in the direction that I'm going to go. And it's really starting to dawn on me that I'm in the very last section of this trail. It's starting to get kind of uh, emotional. This is a really cool suspension bridge that puts an emphasis on the suspension part. <laughs> it's very bouncy. Whoa. Especially in the middle. I'm actually, I had to take one hand off the phone to hold the side. There we go, made it. Load them at one hiker at a time. I'm coming down the hill to Red Eagle Lake, and this close one should be Red Eagle Head. And I think the far end, about a mile further, is Red Eagle Foot where I'm going. So I have no idea how many people to expect to be there. I hope it's not too many. Um, you're supposed to set up one of the tent platforms that they provide, 
but I don't know how they do the reservation system because if they allow four permits per site per night and you can have four people on your permit, in theory, there could be 16 people, which there's no way you could fit that. You could basically, even if you could fit two on every platform, that's still only uh, eight. So let's find out. Well, a pleasant surprise after I walked past the very busy Eagle, Red Eagle Lake head where there was like at least eight plus tents and 12 people. On this side, there's only four others and two of them are thru-hikers that I know and like. Uh, two German guys finishing the Triple Crown white spot and no step. So I figured I'd show you around camp. There's the food storage thing. Mine's the big weird looking horizontal clear one with the pinata bag under it. The, all the tent sites are on this burnt hill over here. So there's four of them. So there's a there's two ladies that each have their own tent somewhere that way-ish. And then uh, two Germans are set up right next to each other. So I have a spot all to myself and there's an empty one still too. So if somebody else comes in, they can get that. <clears throat> anyway, filtering my water. Well, it is quite a nice view. I'm, I'm in a burn but it's probably the prettiest burn that I have been in, almost certainly, actually. I'm really thankful that I got to see a bunch of folks at the end of the section through Glacier that I had met very early on in the trip because it kind of gives it a really nice sort of full circle feeling to it. So Warrior I had met back in the Gila and I saw her more than any other person on the entire trail, which I'm thankful for because she's great. And No Step and White Spot, I met them all the way back probably just about two weeks into the trip in New Mexico as well at the Amazing Oasis Trail Magic. So it's great to see those people at the end too and knowing that they made it. So I've crossed the going to the sun road. It's been a very touristy busy day, but that right there is the pass. And it is a beautiful view from up here. I've been dropping down the north side of Pigan Pass and uh, it's gonna be a, a beautiful walk, I think, with these big, huge mountains on one side. Shadow over there, you can see there's some turquoise glacier melt. And to top it all off, a super red, pretty mountain over there. This is the Many Glacier Motel and Campground that were beautiful, but they had just shut down about the week before, so I couldn't get any um, goodies here. This is the Many Glacier Campground, and specifically the hike in, bike in sites that don't require advanced permits. The ones in Two Medicine um, each only had one tent platform and the ground was really uh, bumpy and rocky and the woods were thick so um, we had I guess there's three tent platforms maybe. No, no, there's only two. Anyway, we had four one-person tents set up on those platforms each having to share two so you're right on top of somebody else and then two other people came into tent and their sights kind of sucked but anyway the point of this is that this one here <coughs> is all considered a hike and bike in including the table over there where I was and this with food storage more food storage water across the way trash right there and then all of that across the street where you can see that picnic table poking out and that food box and those tent platforms, all of that's hiking and biking. So you could fit 20 people here pretty comfortably versus the other one barely fitting five or six. So the trail from Many Glacier to here was very easy, but one thing you'll notice is that it leads to this sort of dead end of this giant cirque. So there is no doubt in my mind that uh, 
I have to go up and over this ridge, so it's probably got to go this way, right? Like, there's no way it goes over those cliffs, but it looks like it's going to be steep for the next bit. This is the north side of Swift Current Pass. Well, that sure doesn't suck. That's the granite uh, chalet. Quite the view. Here's a bit of a preview of where I'm headed. So I'm on this trail right now that's actually gonna snake its way sort of way down behind where you can't see out that way. And then work its way all the way back up where you can't see that way and get back to uh, that sort of gully between that cliff on the right and that burn thing on the left side. So the trail goes right up there. So my campsite tonight is kind of like right in the center on the top of that, which is where a flat top mountain is, but I have to kind of go way out and around to get there. Well, I made it to my last true backcountry campsite for the trip. So this is flat top mountain campsite. Pretty view, you can tell it's been in a burn. So I might have to look around for a little bit of shade while I wait for sunset since it's only two o'clock in the afternoon. But I made good time. It's pretty chilly. Yeah, so for the first time in probably since Colorado, we got below freezing. All the condensation, which there's a ton of in here, that's at least on the fly, is frozen. And my bag is soaked from condensation, so... Taking my time, I think I'm gonna leave my tent set up, put on some warm layers and go have a bit of breakfast and try to wait for the sun to come up and hit this so I can pack it away a little drier. The other bear closure was this campsite that I couldn't stay at because of bear activity. So that's why I had to end up sleeping at the flat top mountain campsite even though it wasn't on the trail. Well, this is it. It's the last full day and will be the last night on the Continental Divide Trail, which is crazy. Um, I slept in today till about 7. And for the first time since Colorado, there was a significant frost. All the condensation on the inside of my tent uh, froze and it was quite cold. The sun's up now and it's very pleasant already, but I took my time. Didn't even leave there until about 9 because I have... Uh, for me, it's sort of a short day to do. So there's a couple little side jaunts to lookouts into lakes that I plan on hitting up today so I don't get to the goat haunt, which is my last site too early. But So far, it's a beautiful day. I'll be sleeping a lot lower tonight, over 2,000 feet below where I slept last night, so it shouldn't get below freezing. But it's an exciting day. I'm really just trying to enjoy it and take my time. So this is the High Line Trail, which is the actual CDT. And I'm glad I came over here because I do get a good view of what I would have had. And the main reason that I came here is because the sign here talks about <clears throat> the Sioux Lake Observation Viewpoint, which goes up that really steep looking traverse into a saddle there. So. Um, definitely more work today to go up this hill, but I'm not in a rush and I want to enjoy Glacier as much as I can. So I had a lot of extra time to kill because the way that the Glacier National Park sites work is you have designated sites so you know exactly how far you're going to go each day. And so at this point, for the physical condition I was in, 
doing a 17 mile day was pretty mild and I could easily get to the end of that by one o'clock in the afternoon. So I came up to this, which is the Sioux Lake observation uh, area and it was an amazing view, well worth it. Here we are at the beginning of the end. So this is the ranger station on the U.S. side of the border. And there are signs all over the place talking about how folks that are, are kind of visiting this area from Canada have to check in and whatnot because this lake is both in Canada and the U.S. I'm at the goat hunt and I just exploded all my damp stuff out right around here, set up my tent and threw all my stuff on that concrete to get some sun on it. And then that their boat showed up and unloaded right there. So on a scale of like, of course there's no boat that lands here to, yeah, I expect a boat. It was definitely um, somewhere on the expectations of no boat. That really didn't make any sense. But anyway, I picked everything up. It got dry. And I doubt they do this whole day. So folks so are going back to Canada to Watertown where I'll be tomorrow. Just got off the phone with my wife. She's boarding her second flight out of Minneapolis, St. Paul to Bozeman. She should be landing in less than three hours. Uh, pretty wild, there's electricity in there. There's bathrooms, I haven't checked them out yet. Running water. And these were not what I was expecting for these shelters at all. Um, I was picturing like Appalachian Trail style wooden lean-tos. But instead these things have these big cubbies and you kind of choose, there's another one over there, um, you know, concrete pad and plenty of room for a ton of people in there so I'm the first one here I'm claiming it but I think I'm gonna go make something to eat because I am hungry I'm adding in some extra uh, detours today to try to make it a little bit more of a fun morning before I meet my wife at the pylon at the border, the official northern terminus. So I'm going to go up to this goat haunt overlook, check out the view from there. And then there's also a waterfall, I believe it's called Rainbow Falls, that I'm going to check out too before I head back down to the goat haunt and kind of hang out and wait for her to get close. I just hung out with this beautiful view on this nice bench for the last couple hours. Uh, even though I'm just finishing my CDT through hike today with future plans of the PCT on the horizon for next year, I'm already reading up on that and uh, trying to come up with my strategies. So not a bad place or way to kill some time. Plus I'm getting some cell service up here from Waterton, so I was able to use the internet. Time to head back down. I'm gonna go over to that Rainbow Falls take some pictures and videos over there and then head back over to the goat haunt and kind of uh, hang out and wait until I hear from my lovely wife Vanessa about when she's on her way in so I can go meet her at the pylon and wrap this thing up. I have just barely started walking and you can see there's obviously these buildings and there's a pile of bear scat right on this bridge. So just goes to show that they come in as close as they feel like. I'm not even far enough away from the buildings for them to give me that warning sign yet. Well, here I am. I've been checking the uh, Fire Out app and I've got less than a mile to go. So a lot going through my head right now. So I figured I would walk and talk. But um, what an amazing journey it's been. Um, the CDT was absolutely incredible. Uh, it's out of any long distance trail that I can think of. It's got the most um, to draw me back to try to do it a second time just because of the way that it, it sort of works with all the alternates. So I would love to do this one again. I had an amazing time. Uh, it's bittersweet to finish. I'm certainly looking forward to going home being with my wife and my dogs. Um, but at the same time, like this kind of lifestyle is something that I have fallen in love with. And uh, going from 
the simplicity of this, going back to the sort of everyday hectic lives that we all live with bills and cars and traffic and work and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's going to be a big change. I'm thrilled to be planning the PCT for next year. It gives me something to look forward to. And I think it'll help me with the transition going back to knowing that I have another big one, which would be my triple crown on the horizon. Um, I really appreciate you following along with my journey and watching all these. Uh, hopefully they were entertaining and helpful if you're planning a trip of your own. And what an amazing uh, journey it's been. I would do it all over again in a heartbeat. Oh, here it is. A bunch of signs and a pylon. And most importantly, all my beautiful, lovely wife, Vanessa, who has come to pick me up. Just re-watching all this as I put this together was getting me pretty emotional. It was definitely a very powerful day and uh, time to kind of conclude this whole trip up like this. But like I was just saying in the video, this was an absolutely incredible experience. I, I had the time of my life and it had everything I was hoping that it would, just the navigation required and the difficulty with the high snow and all the different predators that I'm not used to. So I definitely plan on doing this UDT again, uh, at least once more, someday. But anyway, since Vanessa flew out and met me at the end there, we spent some time in British Columbia, or that's not true, uh, in like the Banff area, basically. So the water here was as green as it looks. It was absolutely incredible. It looked like Gatorade. This is the, the small city of Banff, which we had a good time at. We stayed in, in a, a, another city called Canmore, which had a, an amazing farmer's market that had tons of food and drinks and stuff like that. Amazing views in the background too. So thanks so much for watching my series and I'm getting ready to do the Pacific Crest Trail next. So stay tuned if you want to check that out.